caught to the cloud. All right, let me share my screen and let's do this. All right, networked apologies. That's uh, chapter three, topologies. Uh, Anthony, do you know what that word topology is? Just the word itself. Forget about networking. Topology refers to. Well, it's if I were to guess, I guess. Um, I guess it would like be about um, kind of like a structure. So, like, I guess topology would be like the, I guess, study of a structure or something. Study of a structure. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, sort of structure. Structure. Is this like a like a building, like a you know, like a natural uh, scenery, landscape? Trying to well, let's let's keep. What do you think, Anthony? What what is? Could you add some more? Like so what yes. kind of structure would that be? Structure would be more in the sense of like I guess. I don't want to say hierarchical because there's different types of structures, but in the sense of like, there's a certain, I guess, pyramid or class or some type of division system where you have bottom to top, or I guess- Bottom to top. Yeah, where you study each layer or each part of that whole system. Yeah. Um, All right. Yeah, go ahead. I think of like looking at a map whenever I hear topology. Or like a the map of a mountain, probably seeing all like the different layers of heights and all. You know what, Harvey? You're the right person to actually teach this sub this chapter. How about I take a break and you take over? That is such an excellent uh, oh. <laughs> description there. I I knew you had it in you somewhere, you know. <laughs> and I have a I have a map right there, you know. Oh. Yeah, so you yeah. just said it. That's it. Yep. Yeah. So you know, you have some kind of a hidden professor in you, right? Uh, well, we'll see what the future holds, I guess. <laughs> Who knows, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah. So let's just go. Let's look at uh, so topologies. Uh, I exactly. Uh, I mean, I think that. Um, I mean, both. You know, both are actually correct. Um, you know, there's maps involved. There's also structures in a way. So we're going to bring that into. Um, so that's not completely, um, you know, what Anthony said, there's not completely wrong or off. There's, there's certainly you have to consider structures when you talk about topologies because that is, um, it's a huge impact. Let me just say that, right? Structures. Maybe it'd be buildings, it'd be mountains, it'd be, you know, whatever, landmarks, all affect the topology. So topology there, if we could get a definition of some sort, would be, um, am I sharing my screen right now? You guys can see, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right, so topology will be, I guess, how of how the land is laid out, you know? If you think about your town where you live, um, it's like where everything is at. Okay, the library is over there, the post office is over there, the supermarket is over there, the roads are over there, um, the, the building that seems to you know be on, the, on a hill, it's kind of like how things are laid out. And of course, when you go further and look at a map, um, this is an interesting map, but we're going to come to this in a second. So how things are laid out, right? Um, and when you talk about network topology, 
it is talking about the the physical, right? But two things, because uh, you have you have um, the actual topology, the physical topology, and you have logical. Now, when you say logical, uh, logical in the sense we always refer to logical. When you talk about data, you talk about network data, network traffic, because you don't see it. Maybe some people refer to that as digital, but I'm not going to see digital. I think the appropriate description for that is logical. So you have physical. So physical topology is, is how computers are laid out. For example, at home, you might have your home uh, router at a certain spot. If you if you were to draw if you were to if you were to draw a picture, when we talk about physical layout, if you were to draw a picture, right, um, of your, um, you know, of your of your network at home, right, or let me keep it simple to draw a picture of where all the devices in your house, you know, where, where exactly they are, right, you might find that the router is over here. You might have a desktop computer over here. Maybe your your you know your phone is always on this little shelf here. Maybe your laptop is you know sits on your bed somewhere. Where where things are physically, right? Um, if you if you went into a computer room, right, into a computer room or a, a server room, maybe something in school or maybe you have you work in an office and you have a you know a small computer closet where all the stuff are. You might see some switches there. You might see uh, cables running around the whole place. Uh, you might see computers all set up in a certain way. So it's how the network is physically laid out. And we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, add, you know, we'll talk about it a little bit more to help you get a clear sense of what we're talking about. Now, what we said, I said earlier, I said logical, right? So, the physical layout of things, um, just like it says in this, this note here, this note says the physical layout of the devices and cables does not describe how signals travel from one device to another. So here is, let's see if we can use this, uh, you know, sort of a drawing, if I could. Uh, it's kind of hard to draw anything on um, Notepad, but I'm just gonna just gonna say, you know, this is person one here, and let's say they are on their phone, and this person, I don't know, is on a, some kind of Verizon phone service, phone service. All right, and now we have a second person here. So, you know, they're going to talk to each other. And this person here is on, what, T-Mobile. So person two. All right, so this is a phone call that's going to take place between these two uh, folks here. So person one uh, calls person two on their phone. Right? Person one calls person two on their phone. Um, maybe another way to look at this is, let me say, uh, let me go to, let me go back to you, Anthony. So let's look at two people calling each other on the phone, right? So let's say you're, you know, you're hanging out with a friend of yours. Um, and you know that your friend has gone to the mall, so you call your friend in the mall, right? My question is, what direction, or don't even talk about the mall, forget about the mall. Put two phones, right? Put two phones next, you know, side by side, you know, on a desk, two phones. So here's the picture. I'm just trying to get a good, you know, give you guys a good sense of what I'm talking about. So let's just say, um, you know, cell phones. Let's go to images. Okay, so cell phones. Okay, give me two cell phones here. All right, 
let's use this. Let's use this picture. Or maybe this two, this picture. Okay, let's look at these two guys here. So, Anthony, question for you. So, let's say these two folks here, right, call each other's phone, right? Yeah. In what direction, if we could, if, I mean, if it was possible to see the signals, in what direction does the signal go? Does it go left to right, right to left? You know, they're, they're kind of like sitting next to each other, right? So, say they just call each other right now. What direction does the, does the uh, signals travel? Doesn't it actually go up because they have to go to satellites first? It goes up, so it doesn't go like, look, I'm right next to you, right? The signal just comes, yeah. you know, like right, right there uh, horizontally, so to speak. It doesn't do that? No, doesn't it have to go to a satellite first? Because that's where most of the networks for phones are. So it goes up to some external place. So let's say yeah. uh, this girl calls this guy, right? And you're saying that it doesn't just go directly, like horizontally. It has to go up somewhere, and then it comes to this black phone before the phone rings. Yeah. Okay. Let's test that. Uh, I want to see what you guys, Chris L. What do you think? This this purple phone calls this black phone. It doesn't just go like directly, you know, like on a. Is it a y axis, like horizontally? Um, I would say it goes to the cell phone towers and then um, so say that girl has like Verizon and the guy has T-Mobile in your example. Yep. yep. Um, maybe her phone would go to like a Verizon cell phone tower and then maybe connect to the T-Mobile one to like forward the call to him maybe. So you're saying that the fact that they're right next to each other, right, doesn't mean that the call is just gonna be so like in two in two milliseconds the phone just rings. Yeah, it doesn't it's, mean it's not that, be like that their proximity. It's not that oh we're so, we're close together so our phones should ring right now. You're saying that's not it. It has nothing to do with how close your phones are together. You might as yeah, well be in Jamaica. That. Okay, interesting. Um, Brooke, what do you think? I, was, I just want to see if you guys get in the, you know get a sense of this topology we're talking about here. Brooke, are you there? All right, no, Brooke. Dennis, how about you? What do you think? Are you agreeing with this, or is this like makes no sense? These guys are just right next to each other. What do you mean it goes to some strange place? I mean, it makes sense. I don't think it's it just goes straight to each other. There's like probably like policies involving it and that's why like you have like what they, they call like phone signals right all right yeah so this i think this gives us a, a great illustration of what we're talking about when we say back to this description here physical physical topology physical topology and logical topology so physically this these devices are right next to each other, right? Physically, you can see it's right there. You know, some people even say things like, maybe this girl says to this guy, I mean, your phone is right there. Why is it not ringing? It's like right there. I can see it's just right there. Why is it? What's going on? You know, I mean, your phone is right there. So you should just ring right now. <laughs> you know, people say that. But you guys are right in the fact that the physical layout of the devices or you know where you know the physical proximity of the devices is a totally different idea from how the signals are going to travel even if you even if you even if you touch the devices like you know you touch the devices if you're going to make a call you guys are absolutely right the signals have to go you might go all around the country for all you know right um there's a lot of things that has to be checked out. First of all, we've got to see, does this girl have service on her phone? Is she paid up? Is her account you know, good? Does she have credit? Uh, what's her signal like? Uh, T-Mobile, all kinds of things with T-Mobile has to be sorted out. Then the T-Mobile network has to talk to the Verizon network to see if Verizon has no issues. Does this guy have money on his account? Is his service good? Does he have everything he needs? Boom, 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 all that stuff. 
and then the phone rings. So even though the phone rings like, you know, maybe almost immediately, but the signals don't travel horizontally, so to speak. It doesn't go left to right. It has to go talk to the T-Mobile network, and the T-Mobile network has to talk to the Verizon network, and then the devices now start talking together. So that's what we refer to as topology, is how things are placed, where everything is at, right? And topology can be affected by a whole bunch of things that some we can see, some we can't see, right? So that brings me to this diagram we have here, right? So um, is anyone like big into hiking and stuff like that? And can you, does this map, can you read this map? Any great mountain hikers uh, or tour guides here? Harvey, you have some experience with that, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so the closer the lines so, so, are, the closer go ahead. the lines are to each other, the, um, the less steep that, uh, actually, no, the closer the lines are to each other, the steeper that um, slope is. But the more spread out they are from each other means that it's more of a, more of a, what's it called? Lower steepness. So easier to climb, I guess. Okay, let me let me let me ask some questions. Maybe it will help, help, you know, just for you to respond, and maybe people can get it clear. So, so someone, you know, so you want to, you know, you want to go on a hike, or you want to, you know, go on this, yeah, this long hike, and you know, they give you this map here, right? Or you know, this, um, yeah, a map, a topography map, and now you can see on this map that the reservoir here, right, is like pretty close to the spring here. Like you know, maybe there's a spring here, there's a reservoir here. Right, or you see this black uh, dotted trail, you're like, Oh, the reservoir is kind of pretty close to the trail. That, that looks close. So, Harvey, um, how close are this like in reality? If you're going to go from this reservoir to maybe maybe this um, intersection of this purple and black path, I think, I think it's a path of some sort. How close is it? Is it like, oh, it looks like two minutes, you can just get from there to there, right? right? Uh, well, there's a lot. That's the thing. Um, depends on the path you take. If you were to take the, if say you were at the reservoir, um, and you took the black path, it'd probably be an easier path for you to take. But if you were to go straight from the reservoir, um, yeah, and going up that like, yeah, where your mouse just went now, you'd probably have to climb yeah. those slopes, and it'd be a pretty difficult hike. Yeah. So all these numbers we see here, um. 920, 800, yeah. um, 1,000. It tells you about the elevation, right? Like how high from the ground, am yeah. I right? Yes. So you might be going like some pretty, you know, 800 what, feet? I think it's yeah. feet, right? 800 that's, feet? That's what it says right there on the, um, if you look at yeah. the ground line, yeah, it says 800. Yeah. So you, So the fact that it looks, you know, the topography, it looks like, Oh, I could just I could just walk from this reservoir, you know, you know, just walk, just go st in a straight line. Absolutely not. In fact, let's look at this. Um, let's look at this picture here. So let's say uh, mountain roads. All right. So let's go this mountain roads here, right? Uh, I'm gonna look for a good one here. Okay. Now look at this picture here. Um, so this picture here, we have, okay, so look at this, like a tunnel, like a little tunnel up here, top right. Look at that little tunnel. And then compare, and then go from this point, top right, all the way, let's say right here, I don't know if this is like a, like a bus or something, maybe like a, it looks like a car, it looks like a car right here, like a Jeep or some SUV right here. So going from this SUV, right, all the way to this bridge, over this bridge, right, um, how long do you think it's going to take to go that distance? Um, it's our, how long do you think it's going to take? I mean, why don't we just go straight? Why do we have to go through this winding, winding, winding road? Why don't we just go straight from here to here? Maybe it's, you know, 
The guys who built this place, don't they have any sense? Why don't you just go straight? Sarah, what do you think? Um, well, it's, it's going to take longer than just going straight. Um, so if, wait, yeah, it's going to take longer than going straight. Is it possible to actually just go like do a straight line from here? Like they should have built this road to just go from here, straight here, right? Well, but you have, well, that sounds like a good idea, but you have to consider, like, um, I think Anthony said earlier, right? The structures along the way, like, okay, you see this little, is there, you see this little, this little part, this little uh, part of the bridge here, the path uh, right here. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing is winding, winding, because you have to look for the path that you can create the road. You can't just blast through the whole mountain and say, well, we just want to go straight. No, you have to consider the physical structures, right, on the ground. And like, well, how can we, you know, make a way in this very difficult terrain? We've got to make a way. So they have to, they have to, they have to consider everything around. They have to consider the topology of the whole mountain area. You can't just always go straight. In fact, I think you can hardly ever go straight on any road, right? Let's look at a, uh, let's look at another picture here. Um, well, it's kind of like similar to what we just looked at. Now let's pull up another one here. All right, now look at this. Uh, this, uh, this is let's see, let's see. All right, how about this one? Now, how, how would you like to be, you know, traveling on such a cliff edge of any, you know, I mean, you're taking a trip, right? I mean, imagine this guy's here. Looks like, looks like there's going to be a lot of accidents on this road because this is like the most dangerous. <laughs> I mean, it's like, if you had to turn around, could you turn around here? No. I don't think you could. I mean, anyone could turn around here. What? No. <laughs> I mean, you're, 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 you're <laughs> exactly. You know, it's like you're only going straight. You can't go back. You know, just keep going. So they want to make a road here, right? I guess this is very. I mean, the terrain or the topology here is like the most difficult thing. So they have to kind of wind their way around it and try to make a road. You know, around here. So topology of the whole area it's very very much okay let's look at this one here wow man this is like some interesting stuff here how about this okay that's a bit too tiny but you know maybe you guys are getting the picture of what you know the picture right <laughs> you're understanding what we're talking about here let me see if i can just get one more here talking about topologies all right, here's another one. So here's another one here. So roads, roads always seem to be winding, right? Winding. You've got to figure out the best way to create the road um, and the topology, how the land is built, the mountains, the hills, the rivers, the reservoirs, all that stuff affects how the road is going to, you know, wind around to get a good road going through. So it can't, it can't always, it, it, it's hardly ever going to be in a straight line. So in a sense, in a sort of a sense, when you talk about networking, right, networking is also affected by the structures on the land, by the topology of physical land, right? Uh, by the topology, I mean, imagine for a second, right? Um, Michael, let me go back to you here. Imagine for a second that we wanted to set up, you know, cell service around here, you know, set up a Verizon cell service, mm -hmm. right? Now, where will you begin to build stuff? Like where exactly will you, you know, I mean, where are the, I mean, the people who have to settle down here for a month to build the whole structure? What part of this mountainside do they start erecting all their stuff? 
Oh, geez. Yeah, there's nowhere really good. There's a couple clearings where they could, you know, build, build some temporary, uh, a temporary shop or something like that. But yeah, it's tough. It's tough. So when we talk about, you know, we need to have, we need to have service. Like why do I, why, why does my signal keep cutting off, you know, when I'm on the road? It's because the topology, you know, does not allow service providers, you know, sometimes to even set anything up at all. Right. So you might, you might have service, um, you know, someplace, and then you got to travel another 20 minutes to get, you know, you know, to get your signals back because there's just nowhere to set stuff up. So you, you guys just talked about, um, you know, cell towers and all that cell towers. So when you talk about cell towers, cell towers have to be set up, um, on the road, like when you're traveling, right? They have to be set up on the road. They're not just, you know, you don't just, um, they're not just things to just put anywhere, you know? I mean, that's a cell tower. You have to put it in a place where um, it can be set up properly on the highway, right? That's how this kind of stuff, stuff works. Oh, that's kind of cool. I was gonna say, is that a cell tower? <laughs> is that a cell tower? Is it? <laughs> or just a tree? The Tigerland cell phone tree? Huh. Wait a minute. Huh. Oh, I it's guess just... that kinda of, that's a cool way to do it. Make it not look like an eyesore. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Anyway, so you have to find the available space to set this stuff up. Um highway. Yeah, so, so whenever you're traveling, all you need to do is just look up, uh, look around you. You're going to see cell towers. I mean, you can imagine people who have to set up cell towers in this kind of an area, right? These things are, these things are physical structures, right? Physical structures. You know, human beings have to build them, have to, you know, connect the wires, have to set up, you know, the machinery to, you know, to make all these things work. So it doesn't just happen automatically. Like I just have, you just happen to have cell service. No, somebody has to set up something, right? I mean, here's a picture of people who are, I guess this guy is using a drone. Is that a drone? Yeah. He's in a drone to, you know, do whatever they have to do. So human beings have to do the work and you have to have the good topology on the land to set stuff up. All right, so um, sometimes you have to blast through mountains. You have to, you know, use things like dynamite, I guess, to just blast through mountains to create the space to set stuff up, right? So nothing just happens automatically. So sometimes not having service, you know, like when you, they say, you know, you, you live in a bad area, it just might be there's nowhere for us to set this stuff up where you are at. And, you know, we need a lot of investment, a lot of time, a lot of manpower, a lot of equipment to set this stuff up. I mean, imagine what it takes to set up what we're looking at right now. It's a lot of, it's a, it's a lot. And I mean, don't even talk about how much money, right? So a company that's going to set this stuff up, um, you know, given the topology of the land, have to be ready to invest in it, you know, things like that. So, so hopefully that, you know, kind of gives you, you know, some kind of idea uh, the fact that something is physically laid out in a certain way, um, you can't you can't always determine the movement, right? The movement of people, the movement of cars, the movement of traffic. You might have to move in a certain way because of the topology of the land and networking. As you're going to see, networking and signals, like when we did the uh, trace route. I think on Tuesday, when your traffic is, is traveling from your computer to another computer, it is affected. There's a lot of stuff in the way. You know, the, the routers might decide, well, I'm going to send you this way, and then you're going to come back this way because of the topology of the land. Physical topology affects the travel, the topology of 
uh, affects the travel, uh, affects logical, uh, you know, the travel of signals. So let's look at this picture here too. Anyone has an idea of where this is at, this place, this map? California? It's, uh, California. London, is it? London. You got yeah, I'm so guessing time to him. What tells you it's London? Uh, Tottenham. Okay. That's the symbol on the um, stations are typically like what London system of railroad is called. I think it's called the London Underground under or something. Yeah. Underground, exactly. Yeah, so uh, in America, you call it uh, the subway, right? Um, in... In, the, uh, in in England, you go on the underground. It's, kind of this, it's just a train. It's the train going on the ground like you know, it goes here. But that's what it's called. And the, and the logo. Anyway, so now look at this here. You want to go from Leicester Square here, right, at the bottom, or this parking, this parking garage. You want to go from Leicester Square to where? You want to go to Soho right here. Now, it looks like... Why don't we just make a road that just goes straight from Leicester Square to Soho? But no, you got to go on Shaftesbury Avenue, then maybe you're going to cut your way through to Old Compton Street, and then you might go through Dean Street, and then you take a right and go on Fifth, and then you take a left, and eventually you get there. Um, Jared. How many minutes do you think it's going to take you, or hours, or days, to get from Leicester Square to Soho Square? I don't know, like five minutes, maybe. Okay, so why do you say five minutes? Why not it, 50 minutes? It doesn't look like that many roads are connected to it, but I mean, I don't know the distance on there, so it was just an educated guess. Exactly, because this physical topology or this physical layout it doesn't tell us how you know this fifth this uh what's this fifth is it fifth street dean street this streets might be as long as who knows <laughs> it might be like such a long road it might take you i don't know like a lot of time to go, go through it just looks like pretty close but it may not be close right um so but suddenly there's a lot of, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of buildings, right? There's a lot of buildings, a lot of structures in the way. So we can't possibly just go in a straight line. We have to wind our way. Maybe some of these things here might be underground. Maybe there's some little bridges there. You have to go by a bridge. Who knows, right? You never know until you're maybe there physically. But the physical layout is totally, totally different um, from when you try to, you know, actually move around. So as networking people, that is something we've got to really, you know, be focused on uh, when you're, especially when you're troubleshooting. What are the structures or what kind of issues do we deal with in terms of getting traffic to flow from point A to point B, right? What kind of, what kind of issues do we deal with? Uh, you know, it's like if you want to, I mean, anything you want to do. I mean, let's say, Jared, you want to, you know, you are, you're going to travel and you are going to go to Leicester Square. You got to think, well, I need to get to Soho Square and I got to be there at 12 o'clock. So you got to know somehow, okay, now how much traffic is on the road? How long is it going to take me? I mean, it looks close, but I might have to, you know, start, start out, you know, an hour early or something. So physical layout, but how traffic moves might be totally different. And, you know, networking people are always trying to make improvements. How can we get the traffic there quicker, faster, faster and faster? I saw a slogan once says, faster than fast, <laughs> right? Like, you got to be faster than fast. And that's the whole idea, trying to get everything to go so quickly. You know, but there are a lot of, there's always things, you know, on the ground that prevent, uh, you know, the movement, the way you like it. All right, let's keep going here. So let's look a little bit more here, physical topologies. 
um, like we said, the arrangement of cables, right? How a cable um, has to be, con you know, how a cable is con is connected. Uh, for example, right here, let's let's get another picture. I think pictures help. So let's say computer server room. Let's see if we get something here. Okay, let's look at this here. All right, so this is what you call a data center, you know, with all these switches and all this different, maybe, let's say, for example, maybe, I don't know, Microsoft, you know, has a, or Facebook or Twitter, you know, one of these companies, let's say this is a technician in one of their server rooms, right? Um, now, the physical layout of this setup here, right, like we just established, uh, it's a totally different idea from how the signals are going to travel, right? Totally different scenario. Um, and each device maybe switches, each device, the functionality of each device, um, they, they may not all function exactly the same way, even though we want them to. So what he's saying here is the arrangement of cables and how you connect one device to another in a network that is the physical topology, but the path that the data travels is the logical topology, right? Um, and when you talk about design, we have all kinds of designs. You have the boss and the star, the ring, point to point um, design of physical topologies when it comes to networking. All right, so those two terms there, physical. Physical is how things are set up. Physically, you can see with your eyes, physically. But logical is, well, how does our data travel? How do the signals travel, right? Like we said about this, uh, this guy's here. How does the signals be between the phones travel? Logically. Physically, they're right there next to each other. Logically, totally different ballgame. All right. Um, so uh, you guys uh, you guys may remember this term, daisy chain. We used that like much earlier when computers are all connected in kind of like a straight line almost, you know, or connected directly to each other. Daisy chain. So when you talk about the boss topology, uh, um, well, you can probably tell that it is totally an outdated kind of topology because it looks very much like what we described um, back a few weeks ago. In the, in, the phys in the physical bus topology, all the computers are connected directly one to another in one straight line. So those discussions we had, uh, we, we had earlier, uh, that described a physical bus topology. And it's important to remember that because of course you're gonna get questions along, uh, along those lines but the limitations of the physical bus topology is what we, we, we went into detail about that. Where there's a limit of how many computers you could set up. The cable itself had a limit, right? Um, and well, one of the most, or one of the disadvantages was we, we, we know that if there was a break or there was some kind of an issue along the cable, any point in the cable, the whole network comes down. So this is a topology that is, um, you know, not a very, not a very functional and productive kind of topology, and so it's not very common. Um, well, it may be common in some areas because that's all they have, right? Maybe that's all they have. Um, if you're going to make any any kind of advancement in technology, you got to spend the money. You got to spend the effort. You got to you got to be able to develop things, right? You got to be able to blow mountains up to set stuff up. That's which, like we just said, right? There's a lot of work involved. So, um, you know, all parts of the world, all parts of this state of Massachusetts, all part of the country, parts of the world, 
may not have the same, obviously the, the standard of technology is not the same everywhere. Depends on the resources in that particular area. Um, so if you adopted the physical bus topology, there are limitations there. Um, so, and, of, and also um, half duplex. So technologies using this bus topology uh, function at half duplex. Um, so everything that's a disadvantage with the daisy chain approach, uh, you know, you're going to see it in this physical bus topology. And that's the uh, picture that we looked at earlier in the course. When you physically connect computers um, one to another. All right, a few um, terms for you to take a note of. So, when we say signals, when we talk about signals traveling uh, along a cable, signals. Well, those signals are electrical signals. So when you think about it, um, Edwin, let me ask you. When you think about it, if you have no electricity, can we still have networking without electricity? Um, can you hear me? Oh, yeah, sure. Can you hear me now? What do you think? I can hear you, sure. I'll say we still have networking, but if you can call your router to the electricity, I don't think you can have it. Uh, you're, you're, not coming very, you're not coming through very clearly, Edwin. Oh, you were clear I was, earlier. Oh, I was saying that you may not if you can plug your router to the electricity so is that is that are there any are there options if there was no electricity do we have options of how we can connect our devices well if you, i mean your phone you can connect it to your you know service provider network yeah how would you do that your phone has to have your phone has to be charged, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Right. Your phone has to be charged, um, that's electricity. So let's say your phone, you know, no electricity, you couldn't charge your phone. Well, you couldn't connect to any service provider. Yeah. Amy, Amy, what options do we have? Is everything all electricity or electrical? There's, um, wife, or, well, yeah, most of it is electrical, but, like, there's also gas as an option for, um. Amy, uh, you're kind of breaking up a little bit. Try again. Hello? I yeah, think, go ahead. Okay. Um, so, in terms of, like, alternatives, there's gas, there's solar energy, um, I don't know what it is, but, yeah. Solar energy. Solar energy. Uh, well, the question is, are those are those options developed, you know, enough to power your phone, to power your router, to power the devices in your house, and then power the Verizon stations or Comcast stations, right? Um, and then, I mean, can we get solar power to, you know? power the signals when we connect our cables to our computers. So those are alternative forms. I guess they've been developed, uh, maybe not 100%, uh, but for right now, when you connect cables together, right? When you connect cables to devices, electrical pulses is how the signals travel, all right? So electricity is a big deal. I mean, whenever we have power outages and stuff, it suddenly is a it's a it's an issue, right? Because um, literally nothing can function. 
so think of that. So think of that about electricity. Um, now, some of the information here. This is all a little bit about your, um, you know, when signals again are traveling. Signal propag propagation. Signal propagation. So those are terms that you want to remember when you're taking your assignment for chapter three. Signal travel across the medium from device to device. That's called signal propagation. Just technical terms, right? Um, when a signal gets weak, right? There's something called a terminator. Uh, so, you know, some of these things you just need to know them for definitions. But a terminator, actually, if we went back to this picture here, it says a terminator is an electrical component called a resistor that absorbs the signal instead of allowing it to bounce back up the wire. Um, so let's see. Electrical terminator. Let's see what that looks like. Electrical terminator. All right, so you've got different little devices here that do that job. Um, let's see if I can find a, a good picture of an electrical terminator here. Okay, well, it's going to look something like this. This is the closest I can find. Maybe, all right, well, you have all kinds of, you know, all kinds of diagrams of this terminator, all kinds of, um, I guess, shapes and sizes, but maybe this will be one here. I don't know if this is the perfect picture for what we're trying to talk about here, but in terms of networking, it says that this terminator's job um, is an electrical component. It absorbs the signals so the signals don't bounce back. So if you had this setup, for example, right, uh, your terminator will be maybe at different points, maybe at maybe at the point where it connects to the computers, it won't uh, it will prevent the signal from going back down the wire. Um, Brandon, what do you think the problem would be if your signals we're supposed to be going from left to right, and suddenly some signal decides, I'm just gonna go back right to left. The loop would break. The loop will break, or we're gonna have what we call collisions, accidents. It's like you're going on a one way, you're going on one way street, and this crazy guy starts coming the other direction at full speed, right? Um, signals are, well, in a sense, this is probably more, uh, more for, you know, when you have hubs and stuff like that, you know, signals travel in one direction. Um, the way you have it now with, um, so that's a half duplex situation in a, in a full duplex where you have, you can send and receive, send and receive, send and receive. That wouldn't be a problem, but in a half duplex situation, where you have, you know, you can only send or receive. You can't do both, right? If you were sending and suddenly signals are coming from the other direction, then there'll be a problem because it's not supposed to happen in a half duplex situation. Signals only go in one direction, right? So in that sense, your terminators will be absolutely useful because we want to prevent this kind of you know, accidents. It's like a one-way street when you deal with um, physical bus, right? This is the physical bus topology. So, you know, signals are either going in one direction or coming the other direction, not both. And that's what you refer to here as the bounce, right? The signal bounce. You have to terminate, uh, you have to, you need a terminator. It allows, it prevents that bounce from happening. And when that bounce happens, then there's a lot of, you can call it noise, or data gets lost, all kinds of issues happen. 
So you want to prevent that. So you use that device that's called a Terminator to prevent that kind of stuff from happening. Uh, Justin, how does that, does that paint a good picture? You know, when we talk about the signal bounds? Justin, you there? How about core? Where are you guys? Co, are you there? Justin? All right, who's um, who's this T? Somebody's here with just a single T. Who's there? Who is, who is logged in here with a single T on your name? Well, that's Tigran, sorry, my mic wasn't on. That's who? Tigran, Tigran. I think it's- All right, could you make sure your full, your full name is there, right? Yeah, yeah, I'll change it right now. All right, so how does this sound to you while we just talked about this signal bounce? Does it make sense to you? Yeah. It does. So, say say it out to us, to the class again. If you are to describe it, what does a Terminator do? Is it useful in a physical bus? And remember, this is your physical bus setup. So how would the Terminator help in this case? Where is the Terminator? It says it's a resistor, but where, where is that located? Or is it just part of the ether? Well, I believe, I believe based on this picture, it's a physical device, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a high chance that it's right here. This spot right here, right here, Interesting. right is here. It, is it that device that's connected to the wire, or is it uh, uh, something on the NIC? No, uh, well, it could be a, it could be a multifunctional device. That, you know, its job is to... Uh, its job is to make sure, like we just said, that traffic doesn't doesn't bounce. So, you know, I'm not I'm not a hundred percent of where it will be, but my guess, based on this drawing, is it could be right there. It could be right there uh, at the point um, on the computer. It's got to be somewhere on the wire, right? So you install it along the wire, right? You install it along the wire so that it doesn't you know, it prevents the bounce from happening. Right? So it says it's an electrical component. That's a, a device. Mm. Right? Yeah. So Tigran, you were you were gonna I wanna see if you were getting this. So I mean I kinda have a vague understanding. I'm not fully understanding it, but I mean I, I think it, it does have a use. Would it just be like, I don't know. I, I still think it's kind of confusing, to be honest. What part is confusing? That's why I like people asking questions. What so part is confusing? It's it, it. So it basically, it doesn't, it basically cuts off some of the signals that are, some of the signals that are being bounced off is what I'm understanding. All right. So. In a physical bus topology, right, like in this daisy chain, this is what we call a daisy chain, right, Tigran? Where all the, you know, there's, what's, there's a single cable that connects everything, mm -hmm. uh, which, is, which is, you know, you're most probably going to find that when you deal with hubs. Now, in this situation here, the signals only travel in one direction, from left to right, because you don't have... You don't have signal, you don't have sending and receiving. You're only sending or receiving, not both in this physical bus topology. So if you're only sending, right? Well, we can't be receiving at the same time. It's like we said about a one-way street. If you're on a one-way street, well, you're not gonna have a car coming in the opposite direction. What's gonna happen, Tigran? They're gonna hit each other. You're gonna hit each other or well, somebody has to stop and, and sort stuff out. Yep. 
So we can say that the Terminator operates on a one-way street. It prevents the other guy from coming from the other direction. Okay, that makes sense. So signals are going to travel in one direction or the other direction, but not at the same time. Okay. So your Terminator has to be set up. Go ahead, go ahead. So the Terminator basically just ensures that there's no like collision at all. So it's just it's just a one way at all times. The signal is Absolutely. going traveling. All right, that makes sense. And that's what it, that's what we, that's what it says here, right? Um, a Terminator is an electrical component called the resistor that absorbs the signal instead of allowing it to bounce back up the wire. So we prevent that stuff from happening because you're going to have um, that bounce that. You're going to you're going to degrade the performance of your of your of your signals. So I think I think the one way traffic kind of maybe it's a better it's a good analogy. You yeah, can picture so that in your mind. Would that terminator be set at the very last workstation? I'm assuming is that how it would work? Like it would be at the very last one. So because would it would it be bouncing at that point? Like in that topology, would it be like that that third workstation? Well, let's say that was now, the last one. I see the wire keeping like yeah. the wire keep going, but let's say that was the last one. Would would that be like where it gets terminated, so it doesn't go back? Well, think well, think about this. Each of these computers might decide to send a message back, right? Mm -hmm. every, every point, every point where there's a computer, that computer. Remember, the computers are generating the traffic, so we can assume that the the first computer here sends. Messages and everything goes, you know, goes to left to right. Everyone is sending left to right. You know what I mean? Left to yeah. right or uh -huh. right to left. So any computer or each of the computers in that setup can send traffic, can send signals. So I think we've got to put it at every point where we have a computer. Okay, that makes sense. Because... Computer A can just decide to go crazy and say, well, I want to go in the other direction, <laughs> you know, yeah. or computer B or computer C. Mm -hmm. So we've got to put it at the point where we want to prevent. Uh, it's like, you know, when you go on the road, you see stop signs, right? It says uh, stop signs in every direction. So you have an intersection. You've got stop signs um, right here. So let's say in intersections. Up signs. Oh, when you finished this up, too, I just noticed that there was a picture of an actual Terminator device. Oh, you saw one somewhere? Yeah. It was like back two pages. I'm not oh. sure where you saw it, but it might, might have even been in the book. Um, okay. That's okay. I'll finish up and then I'll. All right. So look at this. Uh, I don't know. Let's see if we can get something here. <laughs> I just, I couldn't, I couldn't help. I couldn't resist clicking on this picture here. Stop signs for elephants or something? Oh, sorry guys, it's getting distracted. Okay. Well, let's use this picture. Maybe this will help a little bit, Tigran. So, now look at this here, right? So this car to your left is gonna go in this intersection and there's a car coming from your right. Well, we need the stop signs to tell them to stop and not go crazy. Because if you don't have the stop sign for the guy on the left, this guy can just get into the street. And the guy on the right, everyone just keeps going. So maybe in a kind of a sense, we're going to say the stop signs are like terminators. Stop. Don't go in that direction yet. You know, if it makes sense. Yeah. No, I'm just trying to sense. make things clear for you guys, right? You need things to prevent traffic human traffic, uh, cars, and even network signals from messing up, from getting messed up. So we have these Terminators um, to help prevent that. Uh, where was the picture of the Terminator? Michael? It was on the uh, Google images you were searching. You, you went back a couple. Oh. Maybe I can, uh... Let's see. See if you can just search network terminator. See it. Oh, was it this one here? Not this one. Yeah, it might have been back. Maybe when I was Oh there it is, yeah. Yeah, oh. we, yeah. This was the picture I pulled up earlier. I pulled this up. 
So, okay, so maybe it looks like there. that. Yeah, so maybe it looks like that, and it does that job. But that was that was um, that's what it's supposed to do. Uh, I'm not sure if it's this exact one or something similar, but mm -hmm. that's what they're designed to do: is to prevent traffic from going in the wrong direction. Let's just say that, right? Right. Network traffic from going the wrong direction. It's amazing how much like electrical engineering is involved in this too. Yeah, they do. Those have to be like. Uh like evolve right i mean they have to be like integrated at this point probably and like pcs there's oh, no way there's like no way that it's like a external like piece of hardware like that at this point right yeah yeah you're right because in fact right now for the most part you don't even deal with um you don't deal with one-way traffic anymore right you deal with it's like sending and receiving uh -huh. so i don't think the terminators are even necessary because uh -huh. um well they're not useful because well, let me not say that, because we still want to prevent collisions, even when, you know, it's like, okay, look at this here. Let's go back to this traffic uh, picture here. Um, when you have cars coming in both directions, right, you know, in both directions, well, there's still got to be something that prevents those cars from colliding against each other. Maybe they are physical barriers or lines in the street, like this yellow line up here, right? It's going to tell this guy to the right, well, don't drive, in that, don't drive on that lane over there. That's for oncoming traffic, right? So their systems, we're probably going to see some of them, that ensures that traffic doesn't collide when going back and forth. So with, with the uh, Terminator... We don't want the traffic coming back on a one-way street. But now that we have traffic going in both directions, we've got to have a way to prevent accidents. We've got to tell everyone, stay in your lane. You can go back and forth simultaneously, but stay in your lane. Right? Make sense, sort of? Yeah. yeah. So, so there's got to be something, right? We'll probably find, it, find out later, but there's got to be something. You've got to have ways of orga organizing traffic. But it's human traffic. I mean, for example, just look at this picture we have here, right? This guy is on a run or a jog. And this guy has what? Like a, what do you call this? Like a crosswalk? Zebra crossing is called in some places. So that's where, you know, a person has to cross the street. The cars you know, have to go on a certain path of the street. They have lines and stuff like that to organize everything, right? In networking, we have to wait, we, we, we need to have ways um, of making sure that traffic can flow, all kinds of traffic. Um, you know, it might be video, it might be audio, it might be, um, you know, whatever kind of data has to travel in a way that everything goes smoothly. Right? Or as smoothly as possible, anyway. All right, so we talked already about the limitations of the physical bus topology, um, the length of the cable, the fact that it was things had, everything had to be daisy chained. Um, we said also that uh, the signal becomes weak because it passes along from computer to computer. So we had, um, we had to create this kind of boosters or repeaters, right, to prevent that stuff from, from happening, right? Um, do we, so do we there still, was a limit. Do we still Go daisy ahead. chain? Do we still daisy chain? Because pretty much any, every, every single time I've ever seen daisy chain used in my life when referring to anything, especially computing, daisy chaining is generally bad. It's like a means to an ends, but it's always has like a host of problems. So um, I will say that the actual daisy chaining of computers, right, uh, is not effective. But if you were to look at this picture we have here, right? okay, let me get a, a different one. Let me get a different one that, is, uh, that might give up. Okay, right here. All right. So this kind of gives us a picture of 
Right. These okay. are computers, but maybe not so clear. One second here. Let's see something else here. Okay, right here. This is a good one. All right. Now, all these are switches, right? These are servers in a computer, in a server closet, in a server room. Mm -hmm. These are all computers. These are all switches, switches, um, different kinds of servers. Now, how are all the switches, right, connected together? They're all daisy chained. Hmm. You have to, all this, all your green and red and yellow white cables are computers. Maybe, you know, it's, it's a large office building. So you have computers with all this wiring. But all the individual devices, you have to connect them together. Oh, okay. So we still daisy chain for servers. Okay. Yeah, you, that's, that's what they're called. They're daisy chained together. But the concept, the I guess the um, the concept of daisy chain is why people frown at the word. But but in actual fact, you have to do daisy chaining with some devices, but not as it was originally, where every single computer was directly connected together. So we're not directly connecting computers now, but we're directly connecting switches on servers and stuff like that. Mm. So on a much on a higher level, sort of. Yeah, I think we're at, we're up where uh, the word always bugs me is when I think electrical. What is electrical in what sense? Uh, da uh, daisy chain uh, in in terms of electrical via via um, either doing light switches and stuff like that, or even if uh, you're installing oh. like, a fancy <laughs> graphics card in your computer and you have a power supply, but the you only have a. Uh, the only way you can make it work is daisy chaining, but if you do that, you might short it. It's always better to have its own line rather than daisy chain at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I guess it depends on the context, right? It depends on the context. Um, I mean, daisy chain as it was originally designed, or, you know, when we talked about it in this sense, you know, had a lot of limitations. But the only way to stack, uh, the only way you're going to stack servers on top of each other you know, is you're going to daisy chain all the servers mm -hmm. or daisy chain the switches, you know, so they, so that the, why do you daisy chain the switches? So the switches can talk to each other, right? Right. So they can talk to each other and keep the traffic flowing. That is pretty cool though. That, that's something you, I think you got to be there and see it in person to really get it. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, I mean, one of the requirements of this course, which we not, we're not going to be able to do, uh, is we, we actually, every semester, we go to the UMass uh, computer uh, warehouse, computer center, the this, this server center. It's, it looks just like this. And you always do it. I mean, you, uh, what's his, uh, Jamie Soul, who is uh, in charge there, gives us a tour all the time. And so you go in there and you see what it's like, right? So um, I'm going to show us a video, actually, of Google. Uh, Google has a data center. And um, we have a video of that. Uh, maybe the next class, we're going to take a look at that. Let me pull it up. Uh, Google, actually, I should go to YouTube for that. Google Data Center. Google, what am I doing? Yeah, so this um, this YouTube clip here, uh, we're going to... Let me ask you guys a question because I always, you know, I always get sometimes confused of if we play this video, how do you guys hear the audio? Do you, um, let me see. Right if now I we increase the audio here. Yeah, so how would you hear it? Because I'm sure you guys have other classes where you can hear audio, right? But I'm always like, well, how do I do that here? Um, well, let me try this. Yeah, it's, okay, I think it's because um, I don't get audio from my computer. I mean, like when I'm on the call, my audio is from my phone. Uh, that's so right. I might have to, yeah, I might have to figure out a way. Or maybe just give you guys, you know what? Let me just give you guys the, uh, you can always search for yourself, but let me just put it there in the, in the chat. But we'll look at the next class. So we're just about, about out of time now. But I'm just going to put it in the chat. Uh, it's pretty, um, it's pretty, I mean, that's like one of Google's actual, you know, data centers. And if you just, it took, it's like five minutes, five minutes, 27. You can take a look at that 
just run that and see what it's like. But we'll look at it in the next class. Oh, well, I just saw a comment here. Well, that's true. So Starlink uh, is one of um, Elon Musk's um, ideas. Well, we can talk about this in the next class. Starlink is actually not for everybody. It's for remote areas. Well, of course, it will take care of the landscape issue. Absolutely. That's part of, part, 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 probably part of why Elon Musk is doing that. Places that are unreachable, right? They're trying to boom, you know, signals from space using clusters of satellites to do that. So who put this here? Fong. Yeah, that's a great, um, it's a great idea. All right. Well, um, that's it. If you have a question, let me know. But let's do the attendance. I'm going to stop the recording now.